thanks for being here. And uh, I'd like to thank NSICA for recognizing Kirk Mangus and Eva Kwong for their contributions and this prestigious award is well deserved for excellence in teaching. I think it's especially appropriate that they receive the award here in Pittsburgh because Kirk is a native and this is where they began their teaching career and they even appeared on Mr. Rogers' na Neighborhood which started here in Pittsburgh. And um, I'm just gonna play the slides and they're just gonna go and uh, there'll be about five of Eva's work and five of Kirk's and it'll go back and forth. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience with them and how I feel about them. We lost Kirk uh, in 2013 and uh, Eva is still very active and teaching all the time and a fantastic person and if you can ever have her at your school to come and work with your students I know from experience they will love it. I heard about Kirk as an undergraduate at the Kansas City Art Institute. I was up in the middle of a frozen cow pasture in Iowa at this little Onagama kiln with other students trying to fire this thing and Kirk showed up. I think he was doing something in Des Moines. I don't know why he showed up, but he there he was. And I had already knew about their work, Kirk and Eva's work. And um, I was just amazed at this guy. He was uh, he was hot. I mean, it was 13 degrees outside, but he was hot and he was moving around and he was animated and he was talking about a lot of things. He was talking about New York, he was talking about Onagama firing, he was talking about clay, he was talking about technical things, conceptual things, and it, the conversation moved fast. And uh, it, it kind of jived with what I had known about the work that I had seen, and now I had met the person who made it. And so I was very compelled by that, and they had just, uh, Kirk had uh, just received his, uh, was, um, got the position at Kent State as, an, uh, um, as a professor there, which he ran that program up until his passing. And Eva taught there most of the time along the way. And so they were a real tag team. And, uh, and it was a very interesting experience because even though they, the husband and wife, they lived together, they were very different people, very, a very yin and yang, uh, type of experience for the student. Kirk operated on one level and um, his, he, he was, his energy was so high that he would be doing, this is literally true, in one week, he would be firing gas kilns to go cone 10, a wood kiln would be going on, he would be doing low temperature luster, he would be doing raku, and he would be drawing, and it was all happening at the same time, and Cone One Sculpture. And it never stopped, it was like that all the time. In academia, we talk about things like immersive education or experiential learning, those are the big buzzwords nowadays. And this is what that was. This is like, this, the experience at Kent embodied that. And so this hotness of Kirk was tempered by this warmness of Eva, who worked in a very consistent methodical method and had very specific ideas about, the slides never progressed. I thought that they, did they progress? Oh, I'm sorry. They're supposed to go every five seconds. Let's see if it goes. Okay, it's going now, I guess. So Eva, Eva had her own qualities, and I think what was really beautiful about the experience is that they let you into their lives. It was unavoidable. It was a tight, small space. They lived not far away. The students were a part of their family, even though they were beginning their own young family. Una was born when I started. This is in the late 80s, and uh, Jasper was coming along. And uh, you, I think one of the greatest gifts that any teacher can give a student is when they let you into their own life, especially their professional life. 
their struggles with galleries, their struggles with how is work going to go from this place to that place, who's going to get to go to Ansika and who's going to watch the kids. All of these kinds of things have to be negotiated. And they, that all ha they wore all of that on their, their sleeve for all of us to see as students. And over the years, they produced hundreds of students. They traveled to dozens of countries. They conducted hundreds of workshops. And they affected thousands and thousands of people. And I doubt that there's very many people in this room that are not aware of Kirk Mangus and Eva Kwong. And I must say that uh, my experience there, because of how sort of raw it was, how, how, it, how it was, how their life and that studio that we worked in was the same thing. It was connected. They didn't go home from work. They were, that was home. And so I learned about how to run a studio. So the grad students that went through that program had the great benefit of understanding, okay, this is where, how you set up the clay. This is how you set up the mixer. This is how you create a serious program where people can really work and, and learn everything that they need to learn. And uh, I, I can only say that out of all of the happenstance things that could have happened to me, running into Mangus in the middle of this frozen field was really something, really a magical thing. And my relationship with him over the years, and especially with Eva of late, has been very special. And I just want to thank all of you, and I want to thank Eva for what she's done for so many people. And that's it. <laughs>